Hey folks, I just wanted to take a quick look at the new uh, Rollerator I got because there were only a couple videos online and wanted to see if I could put something out that was maybe a little more useful to people. Um, this comes from a guy. He makes these as far as I can tell. I don't know if he's outsourced them or if he's actually making all the stuff himself, but his name is Mike. Uh, when you go to Rollerator and you email him, Mike emails you back from his own Gmail. Um, you can see it's actually like handwritten in there. Um, which is cool. It's nice to support a, a guy instead of a mega corporation. Uh, I will say the shipping took forever. Um, these two pieces ship separately. This one here came about a week before this one did. So, you know, if you're trying to get this done before it snows or something, you may want to reconsider or just buy early. Um, you know, he's not Amazon. I guess that's the best way I can say it. Uh, so I will stop this video in a second and unbox. Um, but I just wanted to show you the sort of basic components here. It's pretty heavy duty. It looks like he's just taken some EMT and put it through some kind of a tube roller. Um, this actually shipped by US mail, believe it or not. He just stuck a uh, piece of cardboard right there with an address and a label on it and the mail brought it to me. I thought that was kind of entertaining. So you've got these two uh, attachment points here that are gonna attach on the side of the roller once I unbox it. Uh, and then we'll check this thing out. And by the way, this thing is heavy. Look at that. 33 pounds. So I guess that's part of the way that it uh, gets into the soft ground. Here it is unboxed. You can see that it is definitely um, handmade. Almost looks like it's a wheel or a brake rotor or some kind of assembly from a vehicle. I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like that repurposed to save on some costs. Um, and uh, it's heavy, as we talked about before. Oh, there's some manufacturing info from whatever it was. Um, does have that look like it was part of a, a wheel assembly of some kind. Um, and what he's done is drilled out with these uh, U-bolts. U um, and these are the parts that will actually do the aeration. He's got them all pointed in for shipping. So you gotta grab your 7 16 inch socket. Uh, this is on the website. No instructions come in the box. You have to go to the website. That's not a big deal. Um, so I've already done the first one. Um, so you loosen these two nuts up, you slide the tine out, and then you swap it around. Um, and the tine itself is a piece of tube with a slot cut into it so that it can compress around this inner tube, uh, which is also pretty heavy duty and got a sharp edge on it beveled into it there to do the actual cutting. And then you can see that it is hollow so the little plug will eject out the top. Uh, so not a super complicated design, but certainly a lot of labor, and the stuff is heavy duty. This has not been value engineered to death, um, like something you might get off of Amazon or at Home Depot. So uh, nice quality product. So I'm going to go ahead and swap all these around, and then we'll give it a shot. All right, so there it is, all flipped around. That took me, I don't know, probably 10 minutes. There's a little bit of flipping it backwards and forwards. Um, Putting it together, I just wanted to point out a couple other things. You can see, let's see, get the light here, right in here. He's got on each of these, he's got these little grind marks. And I was kind of confused by those at first. And in the instructions, he mentioned spot welds. All he did is he just created a little ridge there so that when you're sliding this inner thing in and out, it goes and it stops there. So that's a stop. So you just slide that until it hits this back grind where it's divoted in. And that tells you that it's far enough back in. And then, the other thing is he says to do them two inches out. So I just took my speed square and went like that. That's pretty close to two inches. So I did that all the way around. So, um, you know, that's, that's a quick and easy way that I found to do it. Um, and so now you just got to take and attach it to these. A little more assembly video here. You can see I got that side done already. Uh, on this side, you just take a three-quarter inch open end wrench, and you've got a long bolt there, which is unthreaded on the top part. It just secures in here like this. Oops. Everything's harder to do one-handed. So you just go all the way around like that. And he does mention that you should try and lube up these two points with any kind of grease, uh, even a Vaseline, whatever you've got handy, uh, and to do it every few uses. But that seems to be sort of the only real maintenance
right, well, hopefully that worked. So there it is. Uh, I think the video is at 1.30 right now, and I, so a minute and 15 seconds for me to go all the way down the side yard and back. Uh, I did one earlier. It is heavy, you get a little bit of a workout. These are the plugs you get. It looks just like a golf course. There's a little plug of dirt that comes out. And we'll say we, uh, we just had a big storm a couple days ago. Um, so the ground is very wet. If you haven't, if it's not wet where you are, you should water first. Uh, I mowed the lawn a couple, I don't know, a week or so ago, but it's almost November, so it's not growing that fast. And what with the storm, there's leaves everywhere. I did not feel like doing all that yard work before I tried this thing out, but you get these little plugs. There we go. This is the single disc version. You can see it's full there. They just pop right out. It's big. It's heavy. It's fast, it's quiet, seems to work well. Very well made. Local, you know, small business owner made in the USA. It's nice to support somebody like that, even if shipping did take a while. So if you're not sure if you should get it, uh, I would say go for it. I'll just point out that this little yard, uh, it goes around the front. I'll take a walk up there. For this little thing, this is my first ever yard. I never had to do any of this kind of maintenance before. You can see the rows, I, put, I did two passes. And in total, I think those two passes took me less than five minutes. Um, so we had this sodded at the beginning of the year and the guy who sodded it, just for this little bit, just what we were looking at here, he wanted 300 bucks to aerate and overseed. And I got that machine for 270 shipped and I already have a, a spreader that I use for salt. So I'll just rinse it out and throw some grass seed in there. So, you know, for less than the cost of paying a guy to come aerate and overseed, once I have a machine that I should be able to do this. I don't know, some people say you should do it twice a year. I'll probably do it once a year. Uh, so for me, I'd say that was worth it. Definitely, if you have a bigger yard, um, I'd say this is probably worth it too. I mean, you get to a certain size and you're gonna want an actual gas powered machine like the pros use. But if you have a small yard like mine and you wanna keep things going, uh, it's probably worth it. So there it is, there's my review. I'd say it's a good little tool. I uh, would not hesitate to recommend that you guys get one of these things. Enjoy.